Hey everyone, this is my Waterbox 130.4 Reef Aquarium. The dimensions are roughly 2 feet by 4 feet by 22 inches deep. Uh, comes out to around 96 gallons. Um, it's been up and running for just over 6 weeks now. I purchased the tank for just over $300 and it had a cracked overflow, but I was given a replacement overflow from a Red Sea tank with the same measurements and dimensions as the original. Um, it's fairly easy to replace. I used a thin razor blade to cut out the old one and just siliconed in the new one. Um, since I didn't have any of the plumbing, I did decide to drill out the, uh, the holes so that uh, I could fit standard U.S. size plumbing. Uh, I also had to replace the black background on the tank because it was, uh, had some damage to it, but it wasn't too bad to do. I did make my own uh, stand, and when I made the stand, I had one main goal, and that was to get the tank as low as possible while still being able to easily access the sump. Um, several reasons that I went with the low height. Number one being that one of my favorite views of the tank is from the top down. Having it lower also makes you know, aquascaping and reaching into the tank far easier. And I found over the years that I'm constantly reaching in to fix something or other. I built the stand using 2x4s and cabinet grade plywood and magnetic push lashes to create a streamlined look. I also offset the tank from the sump so that I could access the protein skimmer and the roller mat from the top. I also fabricated a floating canopy, again using 2x4s and plywood, and I ran all of the power wires through the wall so that everything is hidden and it creates a nice clean look. Lighting the tank is a Reef Breeders Photon 48 V2 Pro and a 24 inch blue UV lumen bar which I moved from the previous tank. I went with the Reef Breeders light uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one being they have the best par per dollar. Um, and number two is that I wanted a light that I could mount very high. The main source of flow in the tank is a JBow uh, CP120 gyre style wave maker. I've never had a gyre pump before, but uh, wow, this thing really does move some water. I originally wanted two mounted on the back wall, but I quickly realized that even on its lowest setting, which you can see pictured here, it's uh, far too powerful and it would blow sand everywhere. I also went with a J-Bow pump for the return. It's a DCW 5000, so approximately 1300 gallons per hour, and I'm running it at about 30% power. Uh, after running a really cheap AC pump for years, I can't believe I didn't get a DC pump sooner. You literally cannot hear the thing running. The two containers here are my automatic top-off water and my Kalkwalser, which I dose with a Kamor dosing pump. To control the aquarium, I have a digital Quantics Reef Keeper light, which I've been using for the past 11 years. It's been through four tanks. And I used to control two dosing pumps, one for calcium, one for alkalinity, as well as my automatic top-off. My protein skimmer is a Reef Octopus with a pump on the inside and a dial to adjust the skimmate. I previously had a Vertex Omega pump, which I really disliked. Um, it was my first skimmer, so I thought that all skimmers were just a pain until I got this one and realized they're not. Um, the newest piece of equipment I have is the ReefMat 500, which I absolutely love. Uh, days of cleaning filter socks are done. Um, I feel like if you have the space in your sump, you just get one and you won't regret it. So for fish in the tank, I have uh, two Oscillaris clowns, uh, a couple of designer type, I guess. Uh, two regular firefish, a uh, purple firefish, a uh, Bengay cardinal, Melanaris Rass, uh, Redhead Solon or Clown Fairy Rass, uh, Diamond Gobi, an Algae Blenny, and a One Spot Fox Face. Uh, originally, I would wanted to try a trio of Antheas in the tank, but I think I'm going to make the decision to try and stick with the uh, easier fish after I've had some bad experiences in my previous tank with Antheas. Um, I'm also trying to avoid any fish who will become aggressive. Uh, the long-nosed hawkfish I had in my 40 breeder was such a jerk that I hardly ever even saw the other fish as he chased him away so much. 
Um, I'm not the best at keeping up with the names of the corals, and I tend to choose them mainly based on their colors and price. If it's inexpensive and it's look good, if it looks good to me, I'll probably buy it. Um, but some of the corals that I have are Pink's Bird's Nest, I have some orange and green monopores, uh, gold lepto, mint uh, pavonia, uh, some neon green toadstools, blastomusa, duncan, uh, nuclear green pallies, hammer coral, uh, green slimer acro, uh, what I think is a garf bonsai acro, um, I've got another green and purple acro, um, some purple stylophora, and a whole bunch of different zoanthids and a uh, few recordia. I did try to divide the rock into two sections um, so that I can keep my zoanthids from spreading between the two because that has become a problem in the past. Um, I pride and joy of the tank is front dead center and that is my Maxima Clam. Uh, at this point it's about say six or seven inches long and it's one of the main reasons that I upgraded from my 40 breeder. Um, I've had it for two years now, and it was trying to move around a bit, and it was already cramped in there, so it was really a motivation to get a bigger tank, because I want to keep this guy for a long time. I'm currently dealing with a little bit of a cyanobacteria outbreak, which I know is just part of the process, and hopefully it'll go away soon. Um, but I also got quite a few Aptasia popping up all over the tank. Um, if anybody in the southern New Hampshire area has some Berga new to branch for sale. I'd love to try them out. Um, I've tried every trick in the book over the years to get rid of Aptasia and nothing I do seems to really work. So I'm hoping maybe some Bergias will do the trick. Overall, I'm extremely happy with the tank. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. I'll try to do some updates and uh, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.